today. Um, I am Kim Hayden, your host of 500 Doors Real Estate, and I am all about knowing that behind every door is an opportunity, that through our community leadership and taking the initiative, instead of following the path that the other 87% of real estate agents that get their license and fail, we choose as a 13% to step out in front and be of service. So our guest today, super excited, Christine is the founder and managing partner of the Christine Howern Real Estate Team, an all-female team of passionate, client-centric realtors based in Toronto, Canada. Canada, folks. Uh, that has been in the top 1% and 2% based on sales volume since its inception of 2013. That's a feat. So remember, folks, 87% of people who get their license drop out. Only 13%. So, so literally we're going down and down and down. <laughs> so you're going to learn a lot today. The success that Christine has had in, as a, in her real estate has allowed her to focus on her other passions, coaching ambitious realtors who want to create higher level success, joy and fulfillment in their business. This is really important. If you don't have joy, don't do it. She started Christine Cowern coaching in 2019 to provide high value training and support for agents and teams across North America and is a certified team performance coach, certified energy leadership coach, and a certified everything disc trainer. She holds a cert certificate in leadership principles from Harvard Business School Online. Okay. I think, I think you could start your own school, Christine. I think you could teach me. Can I get certified through you? Because I don't want to go to Harvard. <laughs> probably. I probably have enough certifications at this point that I could certify other people, Kim. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Can, we're you, gonna... can you tell that I believe in the power of education and, and professional development? <laughs> Uh, well, absolutely. And, you know, I find the most interesting conversations come with those who have invested in themselves. And that's the key is, are you going to invest in yourself? So let's talk about speaking of ourselves. Who are you? Oh, my gosh. What a big question. You started with the, the deep question. Okay. Who am I? Well, first of all, I'm a mom. Um, I have a little three-year-old boy named Jacob, who is the light of my life. Um, and right now is, is um, very adamant that he doesn't want to go to senior preschool. <laughs> um, we had a long journey bringing him into the world and actually ended up using a surrogate. So his entire story of how he came into creation is still blows my mind today. Um, and I am passionate about helping women. Really, you know, for me, when I started in real estate back in 2007, which really ages me, I had worked in advertising. I have a master's degree in journalism. You know, I've done multiple different things in my life. And, um, you know, I really, really, really fell in love with real estate back in 2007. And as I, you know, grew my business and started to develop a team, my love of really coaching and supporting women, not that I don't coach men, but, you know, 95% are women. Um, really started shining through and it just gave me more and more of a purpose to sort of sh to show up every day and show up in the best version of myself and to get the best qualifications and to, you know, really support women in, in business. So I support my team, all female ladies, woohoo. Uh, I coach them and I coach mostly women realtors. So, you know, that's why I get up in the morning, my son and my team of ladies, and my coaching clients and my husband, we can't forget about him, but that's a little bit of a snapshot. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, uh, I, and you know, I, I want to say congratulations and good on you because the, the, the path that you went on to, to bring your son into this world is 
a very challenging path. I interviewed a gal. I haven't released her interview yet. She actually owns one of the leading surrogate agencies globally. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And she talks about how she herself has been a surrogate four times and uh, what they really feel their mission and mandate is. And then that's a discussion for a whole nother. That's time, a whole other podcast. <laughs> speaking of surrogacy, you're, 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 you're helping to cure you know, and baby agents into master agents, which is That's awesome, right. which is awesome. So let's talk about a little bit about what you do. We're going to take this twofold real quickly. Okay. One is tell me a little bit more about your practice within Toronto and that one yep. and two and 3% top ranking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I started uh, in back in 2007, I was a solo agent, didn't know what I was doing. Uh, and I was one of those people that didn't want to sort of take a step forward and until I knew everything. <laughs> One of those high maintenance, you know, high performing perfectionist A type people. Um, and so I ended up joining a team for a couple of years and I learned from them, you know, and they were a very high producing team in my market at the time, you know, what to do and what not to do. And so when I left that team and went out as a solo agent, within a couple of years, I thought to myself, you know what, I can create my own team. I know the failure rate in real estate is 87%, but I'm going to completely go against those odds and just work really hard. I've always been a, you know, a, a, as, you, as you can tell from my certifications, really been, um, you know, high on personal development. So I thought, let me just put my nose down, work really hard. And I want to create my own team, like the team I was on. And that's what I've been able to do in the last 10 years since I've had the team. What's your average? Everybody wants to know because they want to know benchmarks. Um, the average agent on your team, what is their average number of transactions each year? So right now we've got a team of, I don't sell anymore. I actually stepped out of selling myself a couple of years ago when my son was born. Yeah. Um, so the three agents on our team, you know, they're averaging around 30 transactions a year, something like that. I mean, in the last two years, I just pulled the stats for you, Kim. I think we've done 187 million in sales volume in the last two years. That's impressive. Only. Yeah, that's impressive. I'd have to go back to the vault to see how much I've sold since 20, 20, well, uh, 2007, but it's been a lot. <laughs> and Christine, we're going to actually, I'm going to have you on another podcast because everybody needs to hear this. I know we are in a, uh, an affordable housing crisis right now mm -hmm. in North America. We have, and Toronto just released a stat that they are estimating another 600,000 people moving to Toronto in the like near foreseeable future. So we're going to uh, have another conversation. So everybody be prepared. I'm going to have Christine back and we're actually going to dive a little bit further into this, how we can be prepared as real estate agents to serve the underserved yes. and to find solutions. How does so that sound important. to you, Christine? I love it. Sign me okay. up. I'll be there. Okay. And then, you know what? I think we've got a, a couple other gals that I've talked to that work with in the development and the finance. And I think that that would be a really awesome thing because folks, as a real estate agent, we are not, we are not shoe salesmen. We are not working at a mall. We are businesses and businesses create solutions for consumers. And, and, and so, and to do 30 transactions for each one, that still puts them in the top 10% of all agents. So not only did they achieve that 13% of survival, but they are now in the top 10% and even would, I'm going to guesstimate actually closer to the top 5% of performance within agents. Um, let's go into, so we talked about your team and, and, and what you do and what you're doing within your local market. I'd like to actually get three actionable steps from you that new agents can do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what I want, I'm going to preframe these. National Association of Realtors says that the average agent in North America makes less than $56,000 a year, but they're also working less than 30 hours a week. And I believe, I believe that's not because new agents are lazy. I believe it's because they don't know what to do with that other 10 hours. Mm -hmm. What are your top three cost-effective strategies the new agents can implement tomorrow to start filling that 10 hours that can lead them. Oh, by the way, folks, National Association of Realtors said, if you do 40 hours, you're going to hit those six figures. So let's give them three tips and strategies. 
I love it. So the first one is, and you know, this is an old school tried and true, but I find that a lot of agents are not actually doing it, especially new agents. How much are you prospecting? How many new conversations are you having every day? Because that is the foundational metric that will tell you as long as you know you have the other things in place, like the right scripts and you can close and you can move through people through the sales process, that will make, make you money. And when I coach, I coach a lot of new agents. I ask them when I start coaching them, how many conversations about real estate are you having every day? And they say, you know, three or four, maybe. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, let's look at the funnel, right? Because if you have three or four conversations, the likelihood of any of those people wanting to buy or sell real estate in the next three to six months is probably pretty low. But if you have 10 or 20 or 30 conversations, that's when you start trickling down at the end of the funnel to sign clients, to close clients, to a commission in your bank account. So that's the first one is you've got to have the right number of conversations every day for your income goals and how much money you want to make. And if you're not having them, it's not going to happen, period. And those conversations can be a combination of strategies. It does not have to be sit on sit in one spot and, and nope. robo dial everybody. It's a combination. Are you are you out in your community? Are you going to a networking mm -hmm. event? Am, am I correct that this totally is, if we and say so, 30 conversations a day, it's it's yep. a combination of efforts. And so that's that's kind of part B of number one, uh, which is you know, I'm not talking about dialing cold calls online and talking to people who have never heard of your, your don't name. want to hear from you, quite <laughs> frankly, who you tell you, I've got to go and hang up the phone because yeah. there is about less than 1% of agents that will actually thrive in that sort of lead generation environment. Very, very, very few agents can dial and dial and dial and dial day not after me. day. Most agents can't. And so what I, and so a lot of agents come to me and they say, well, is that the only way that I can succeed? And I say, no, let's look at your community. Let's look at how many people, you know, I mean, the average person knows seven people in a 12 month period that are going to be moving. That's a stat that blows most people's minds when I tell them. So how many conversations are you having about real estate? Are you doing, say you're a new agent, you don't have any listings. Are you doing open houses for other agents? Are you meeting people that way? Are you joining local community groups or networking groups? Are you a secret agent or are you actually assertive, not aggressive, assertive about telling people what it is that you do and then moving them along the cycle in a, in a non-aggressive way? Um, so you can get 20 conversations, 30 conversations through, you know, as many different of these sources as, as, as you know, want you want and I say you know what really resonates with you how do you love meeting people maybe that could be 20 conversations a day just that one lead source yep so okay. number two oh number two I'm going I'm going to number two Kim okay let's do number two <laughs> number two is you really want to have a, a hard look about um who your ideal client is because most new agents, and I would say probably a good 80% of agents right now, still that I'm seeing on social media and in my networking circle, they're generalist agents. They want to sell everything to everybody. They're driving an hour this way, an hour that way. They're selling condos, townhouses, every price point, every demographic. And especially as new for new agents who haven't started to build momentum in their business yet, you need to find a way to differentiate yourself. And you can do that through figuring out who are the ideal clients that you want to work with through your business. Did you have, um, you know, a 20 year career in a corporate industry, right? Could you potentially have that niche? Because you speak their language, you know, those people, they know you, they trust you already. Um, that is much easier than, you know, trying to be everything to everybody, which is still what 90% of agents are doing. And that's the one thing that, you know, back in 2007, if I could have told, changed anything about my business, I would have niched way, 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 way sooner than I did. 
because otherwise you're just part of the noise of the yep. thousands you, and thousands of agents that are in your market. If you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to, to no one. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Number three. I'm excited. Okay. Number three is um, delegate leverage. Let's do that from the top because I think a lot of agents, especially if they're new, they think to themselves, okay, well, I have to write all my social media posts. I have to do all, film all the reels. I have to prospect for new business. I have to work with business. And then I have to do all the other, I have to put up my signs. I have to host the open houses. And it's very easy for them to get overwhelmed very quickly. Yep. So, you know, you need to look, start looking at, you know, what is your dollar per value worth? And if it's less than what you could pay someone to, you know, put, put together your graphics on social media and create some posts for you, for example, or do admin work, then why are you doing all of that yourself? Yep. Um, because that is a very easy way to get stuck in busy work mm -hmm. when you're not focusing on the key things you need to, which are having the new conversations, mm -hmm. setting up consultations, and closing clients and making money. Absolutely. And remember, you are the face. You are not, and the, and the face is not the person who's doing all the crappy paperwork. Okay. No, it's not. So, and everybody needs a job. And just remember this, everybody needs a job. Not everybody can be the face, but everybody needs a job. So give opportunity to others. That's really what you're doing. You are creating a a revenue vehicle. If you're really good at what you do, you're creating a revenue vehicle that can actually feed multiple families. And what a yeah. gift. What a gift. Exactly. Because, you know, that's a great way to look at it. So not only because, you know, if you look at your day, okay, you work eight hours a day, say, or nine hours a day. If you're spending six of those hours doing behind the scenes stuff, that is not involved with connecting with new people and meeting with new people and closing new people, you are missing so many opportunities to make more money. And so it's about changing your mindset. If you think, oh, I'm gonna spend that, oh, I don't have that money to spend, then what's gonna happen? You're going to continue to spend five or six hours out of your eight hour precious hours a day doing the things that are not actually helping move your business forward the most. And that's where I see agents in actually all levels, especially beginners and sort of intermediate get caught all the time. And I, I just want everybody to know that there are AI and app out there. Just so you know, I personally, my business employ about four different AI platforms that I actually can interact with my virtual team. So I see what they're doing. I still have control. Yeah, we still have communication, but I'm not spending the three and four hours to curate the right content. I provide them all the, the content, but they curate it. They, yeah. they make sure it sings with SEO. It does all those things. That's not my job, right? So be the rainmaker, be the rainmaker that you are destined to be. Absolutely. So why, why would you, why? You've got this beautiful baby. You have this awesome husband. You have this revenue model within your, your, you know, you have your company, right? Yeah. Why would you take on developing an entire online? Because it's not easy. Anybody out there thinks that, re that online companies is passive income and happens overnight. They, you know what? Obviously you haven't done it. It takes two years of real development getting the, the creating the funnels finding the right people getting the message out there and then you're constantly still working it there's nothing passive about it why would you do this like you have so much sometimes already. i ask myself the same question kim every few months i'm like why did i decide to start a whole new business when i already have a business um i think part of it is for me i'm such a you know, wanting to give an educate and compassionate person that for me, there was such a need in the industry, especially to coach agents that are just getting into the business. You know, when you think about it, these people are spending a lot of money getting the real estate license with a hope mm -hmm. of building a brand new career where they can feed their families and make better money and work for themselves. 
And a lot of times they're not getting the right training and support, which is why so many of them fail in the first couple of years. And yeah. so I thought, you know what? I'm going to take on a new challenge. I can yeah. do both. I can. And so, and so what I did actually, Kim, in order to facilitate uh, sort of, you know, running both companies is I brought in a managing partner to the real estate team and I stepped back from selling. So that's the key move that I had to make in order to be able to start the, the new business. Um, I leveraged. <laughs> Absolutely. Leverage. Well, and, and really right now is such a beautiful time because we've gone through the pandemic. Everybody knows the online world. It's, it's no yeah. longer just a few it's and and the reality is is the amount of content that's out there first of all folks the amount of content that's out there it that's free there's no reason you should not be putting at least 30 minutes a day yeah like this conversation right here christine is just giving you three how many conversations do you have who is your ideal client and are you delegating the tasks that you hate right? Are you delegating the tasks that do not bring you joy or do not create revenue? Your job is to create revenue. Your job is to be the rainmaker. Mm -hmm. Your job is to be the front of face that generates money that feeds families. That is your job. That's a and you good might, real and, estate agent. And you're probably going to need to go out of your comfort zone in order to achieve that. But that's all part of growth, yeah. which is going to uh, set you up for so much success in real estate. If it's easy, you probably are not doing, going out of your comfort zone enough to really grow your business. And that's why it's called labor, a labor of love, <laughs> folks. Nothing easy comes free or cheap. Um, real quick, before we move into kind of our thoughts around community, I would like to know uh, what you think. I know what this the statistics in the United States, because I couldn't find anything in Canada. The statistics in the United States says that you need to be investing upwards of 7% of what you want to make in order mm -hmm. to get where you want to be. So if you want to be making, you know, a hundred thousand a year, it's just using an easy number, you need to invest $7,000 a year. And yet not enough agents are getting mentorship or getting coaching, right? Mm -hmm. Or they'll go into and they'll spend $3,000 for a ticket to Tony Robbins and that only happens that 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 momentum lasts for a week, and then so, they don't implement most of what they've learned. But they correct. spend all that money. And Tony's a great coach. Don't get me wrong. Don't Tony Tony Robbins yeah. is an awesome coach. However, consistency is king. You can figure out consistency in real estate, and you're not mm -hmm. freaking out when you're next got to pay the next uh, uh, mortgage bill or or you know get a new vehicle or anything. So let's talk real quick around what you think new agents should be investing right off the bat, right out of school. Because school really is designed to get you licensed mm -hmm. and know not, how not to be sued. That is really their job, right? How to comply within the jurisdictions and regulations. But they don't teach you the art of the business. So what do you think people should be investing on a monthly basis? I think 7% over the course of a year is a good general number. I would say, you know, anywhere between five to 10% in there, in that range, you should be investing into some sort, you know, if, so, so let's qualify this. If you're on a team right now and they're giving you amazing training, that's wonderful. You're giving them probably 50% of your commission though. But, but for some agents being on a team, especially if they're new is fantastic. They for other agents, you yeah. need that support. For other agents, they, you know, they, they come to me all the time and say, you know, I want to invest in a coach where I can get one-on-one -on -one individual customized support for a fraction of what it would cost me to pay a team. <laughs> and so let's do VIP coaching together. And I say to them, you know, between five and 10% of what you want to make, which is the key, not what you are currently making, what you want to make should go into coaching. And a huge key to that is accountability. Yep. Even oh, on yeah. teams, a lot of agents aren't getting the accountability that they, that they need in order to grow and start seeing results. And so that is key, key, key to the coaching relationship is accountability. Otherwise, it is very easy to not make progress. They say, so on Can Talks Resilience, we have had over a hundred different women speak from all different walks of life that are true 
experts within their zone of genius. And I've had women on that have talked around the word motivation. And they say, motivation is not integral within human nature. That having that external support and accountability helps us continue moving forward. And that's truly where the value of relationships, because the reality is, is a lot of stuff you'll hear or learn is common sense. It's stuff you already know. But like Glenda the Good Witch says, <laughs> you've always had the answers within you. You just needed to learn them. And that's what we are. That's what that's that's what you do is you're you're Glenda the Good Witch. You're sitting there going, you know this. You intrinsically know this. Let's bring it out and apply it. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. And then let's up level. So let's take the foundation of what you inherently know and then up level it Bingo. by giving you the skills and giving you the tools and giving you the strategies. And, and the, the tools are critical, like just to get that, that how to approach a business to create a B2B conversation mm -hmm. is really scary as a new real estate agent. You don't feel qualified. You're not sure if you're even can, you know qualified to be a business. Mm -hmm. And yet you want me to go and talk to the local coffee shop? <laughs> and that's where coaching and mentorship can bring you all of that support. So let's go into community. I want to know what your definition of community is and why so many agents are afraid of it. That's such an interesting question because so many agents are afraid of it. And I think, you know, when it, because I do a lot of mindset coaching as well, I am an energy leadership certified coach too. <laughs> I'm going to forget all my certifications soon, Kim, but there's like so many of them. You'll just but, have to, we'll just recite the alphabet and there is a combination in there somewhere. I guarantee Exactly. You. Exactly. I think so many people are afraid of failure or afraid of success or afraid of rejection, that that's really what drives us or keeps us stuck. And so when you talk about community, which by its very nature should be supportive, should be encouraging, should be nurturing, should be um, collaborative, you think of that definition and then you're, but you can't, you know, in your mind, you're like, oh, my fear of failure. I don't want this business owner to say no. I'm not going to feature you. I don't want to put myself out there for fear of saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. That's very counter intuitive to what community actually is at its foundation. So I think even flipping the switch in your mind and starting to think about community in a different way could help you overcome some of those fears that keep you sitting at home as opposed to actually getting out in your community and making connections and making other people's lives better, right? You use the example of a business, going into a business. Okay, so you go into a business that you love, you build rapport with the owner, they have 50 people coming in every day. Um, they want to sell more and, you know, create more products and sell more to make more money as well. And so why can't you create a win-win situation with that business where you're both promoting each other's businesses? Because it's not just about them helping you. It's about you helping them. So let's succeed together. But that's a shift that you have to make in your mind about how you're looking at the opportunity. Well, and I heard last night, I learned a really great strategy, really great strategy. Uh, Dr. Erica Steele out of Virginia. She is, she's, she's like you, she's got six medical degrees, like <laughs> two PhDs, three masters. Like, it's like, seriously. And she's back in school for just one more. Oh so my gosh. <laughs> she believes the brain needs a, to journal. You need to journal. She goes, all the science is in journaling. She says, but you need a trash journal and you need a treasure journal. So let's apply that to real estate. All the trash talk that you give yourself going, oh my God, I didn't over deliver. Oh my God, I didn't do it right. I'm not prepared. You know, my, my, they saw me as this, you know, uh, two years ago. Are they going to take me seriously? All that trash, put in your trash journal. I want you to fill up that trash journal and then take it out back and burn it. And in your treasure journal, 
everything that you are able to serve your communities every time you have done something for somebody, even just opening a door at the coffee shop and saying hello to somebody mm -hmm. and making that eye contact, put that in your treasure journal because that may have been the only eye contact that person got that day. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I so, mean, I did, I, I did a deal once from meeting somebody in an elevator when I was going to do a showing for someone else. You know, Absolutely. There, people are everywhere who have a real who have a potential real estate need. You just have to be open um, and put yourself out there. And here's the thing about that too, is it's a confidence competency loop, right? Well, the like more that. confidence competency, competency loop. loop. So the good. first thing you have to do is take a small action. And that could just be opening the door for someone and smiling at them in your condo building, right? Or in your, yeah. your neighborhood shop. Then, and that will give you a certain level of confidence. And then you get a little bit, few more skills and tools, and then the cycle continues. So the more confident you are, the more confidence you'll have. The more confidence you have, the more you'll be willing to build more competence. And it's an endless loop. But the first thing starts with taking a, I'm not talking about, you know, calling 100 people a day. I'm talking about opening a door for someone and smiling at them and saying, how's your day going? And the next day do a little bit more and the next day do a little bit more and then you start getting positive feedback and then your confidence goes up. And so then you start doing, you know, doing more and more. So your confidence competence goes up. And I, I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing loop, but you have to get in the, get in the circle first. People just want to be seen, heard and valued. That at the end of the day, human nature, we want to be seen we want to be heard and we want to be valued. And if you are the person that shows up and sees them, mm -hmm. listens to them and shows them the value because you have listened, because you have heard, heard them, mm -hmm. you will win the business. That's because not a lot of people do that. Not a, pe a lot of people are looking up. And I trust me, your shoes are not that attractive. There's <laughs> nothing on your phone that is, is worth missing an opportunity to see here and value a new contact. And so a new, a new reframe on that, and I love that you brought up this point, Kim, is instead of thinking of yourself as the salesperson, which a lot of people have a trigger around, yeah. I don't want to sell anything. Come from the place of serving instead. Yep. I right? love that. I love that term, servant leadership, mm -hmm. you know, and and, you know, it's, and I'm huge. I mean, I'm all everything. That's why our Facebook group is marketing and community leadership. I, I'm not here to sell anything, right? I have never sold anything. I have shared the opportunity. I've had yeah. clients that have started with one child and had six kids and I've moved them through multiple homes. I've had people pass away and their mm -hmm. family has relied on me and they knew mm -hmm. they could. Because the basic principles, no like trust, have always been a core foundation to everything I do, mm -hmm. right? And that whole kind of everything goes in threes. You need to give, 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 then you will receive, right? If you're giving, you know, if you're giving to your community and your community be, can be a single person, it can be a geo community, it can be an online mm -hmm. community, it can be a community of interest, it can be a community of faith whatever those communities are. And quite frankly, if you're going to be successful at this, you need to have at least four or five, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And oh, don't forget the community of volunteering, less than 27% of North Americans actually volunteer. And what a great way to give back to a community and to create true social, social media. Mm -hmm. And then- well, you, guys, you guys are getting nuggets today. What happens is- these people who you're giving your time and your energy in these organizations, they want to support you and your business as well. And so they start coming to you saying, hey, I'm thinking about buying a house. Hey, I'm thinking about selling my house. And then naturally deals yep. start happening. So it doesn't have to be a scary, it doesn't have to be a scary thing. And if you plan on being in the business for a decade or two, like I was, you don't need the business tomorrow. Build it for three years. True business owners know their sales cycle like up to five years. 
they're not running around adidas and and nike and stuff they've got their 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 promotions and their campaigns they've got everything sitting out there for five six ten years so build your business today for tomorrow's successes don't run around today have you heard that term commission breath yeah. <laughs> nobody likes it <laughs> it's commission breath the desperation has a set so um where can everybody find you because just like this is this is you are you, you know though you are preaching to the choir like i love every single thing that you said and just so you know people over 500 million dollars of real estate has transacted through my hands and i'm sitting here going hmm if I wanted to go back into community, I personally believe Christine would be in an alignment to mentor me because the day-to-day -day of real estate can be challenging mm -hmm. and you need to align with somebody who is rec who aligns with your core values. And uh, so where can, where can we find you? Okay. Well, let's see. So my Instagram is Christine Cower and coach, very straightforward. I'm on Insta all the time, doing my reels, doing my thing. Um, Christine Cowan Coaching is my website, and that has links to everything. I'm on Facebook. I'm on, in, on LinkedIn. Just Google my name. You will find me. I'm everywhere. <laughs> she is everywhere, and we'll have all those links in here. Um, Christine, can you tell me one book that every real estate agent should read? Yes. Now, it's a little bit of a different book, so bear with me. Okay. It is not a sales book. Correct. So um, awesome. it's not your traditional uh, go and sell. Uh, it's called When Women Rise. So it's, it's more geared towards women. Can you sense a theme yeah. here? Um, it's by Michelle Cambolis. And, you know, because for me, I, I love this book. It's very spiritual. It covers everything from, um, you know, gratitude, to breath, to presence, to, you know, the different types of stress that you can have in your life, um, you know, physical, physical, mental, and spiritual. I really feel like in this, you know, world of real estate, which can be very stressful and very disempowering, if you don't come out the other side of it, that everyone needs to be grounded and really practice self-care as much as possible to get through these crazy times, especially in a market shift. So I would highly recommend When Women Rise. I absolutely loved it. It's on my side table. I have the audio book. I mean, I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> and you know- I should get royalties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, this is this one's my favorite. I was actually just going through it with- Oh, and I love that. Uh, I love that go giver. That is actually, that's, I, this is, um, as a real estate agent, we need to always be thinking and putting ourselves in the other person's shoes. And yeah. I love how this is an easy read. Like I actually, I don't read, I listen. Uh, so audiobook. I'm like you, I have both the physical because I want to look smart and <laughs> I, I do the audio because it works within my schedule. Right. Um, but yeah, like really, I love how you actually went back to the care of the human who is creating the revenue. Mm -hmm. I love that. I always do that. And here it is, by the way, I didn't realize I could show it, but oh, I have absolutely. it right here. There you go. That is awesome. Can you pull it up a little, lift it up? Can every, you see that? No, back it up. Pull it back to yourself. <laughs> I just want to read everyday practices. Awesome. Because if you're not, take, if you're, you know, there's so many burnt out agents out there that end up hating their jobs or hating their careers, but they, they actually are treating it like a job more than a business. Yeah that I really feel like you've got to go back to basics and build in a self-care routine consistently in order to be at the top of your game in real estate. Bingo, bingo. And be, you know, don't, you can work in your business or you can work on your business. You have to just choose which one. Did you mm -hmm. buy yourself a job or are you creating opportunity? Because real estate, some of the greatest wealth in this world is created through real estate. Um, we've had lots of women on the show talking about um, uh, the investment cycles and how you can take just a small percentage of each commission check and start investing it in real estate so you can actually own more real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody's got to take care of you when you're 80 and 80 does come. We will all be 80. <laughs> we will be blessed to reach 80 at yeah. 85. And you're in a position, you're in a career, 
uh, in real estate that if you work real hard at it for 20 years and you build it into a legacy generator, not only for yourself, but for your clients, it can take care of you well into the, the, your last golden years mm -hmm. and your family beyond. So, um, what is a quote that you, you kind of every day is like that, even because you have, you have rough days, right? Or is your, your, your entire world is all rainbows and, and unicorns? No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. I have rough days. I mean, I'm an, I'm an age type perfectionist. <laughs> you know, I'm constantly like, okay, let's back it up here, move a little slower sometimes. But it's great because I can coach myself out of it too. It's just yeah. like I can coach my clients. Um, and it's on a pillow behind me. I don't know if you can see this, but it says she believed she could, so she did. She believed she could, so she did. It is so simple and yet so powerful because your mindset around your business and your abilities could either leave you sitting on the couch all day, not making one phone call or actually getting out in the community and walking into that local business and starting to build rapport and starting to build an amazing business. But it all starts with your beliefs and taking the disempowering beliefs that you have and doing something about them. do it. I think that's a slogan, but just do, it. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. You won't regret it. Absolutely. And that, that, and this applies not just real estate. This literally is basic principles and practices of developing any business. Mm -hmm. Yep. But remember, you are not a salesperson. This is not a shoe shop at the mall. You are a business person. You are a business person that has the opportunity of generating revenue that exceeds beyond you and can help fuel and feed your local economy. So uh, I do believe uh, leadership. Any closing parting words? I have, like, like I said, we are going to come back. I'm going to have you back on the show because there's other things I want to tackle with you. And I think that you have uh, some really great insights that you can share with real estate agents on how they can navigate some of the challenges that we will be facing over the next few years uh, mm -hmm. and even further. And uh, an informed agent can be an agent of change for many, many people. So any parting words that you'd like to share? Well, first of all, I love you. I love everything <laughs> about you. Um, secondly, whoever's watching this, you know, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, get the right support, and you literally can build such an amazing business and have such a contribution to your community and to society and to the people that you serve. Don't get stuck in your head. Think vision. Think what are you great at? What do you want to do more at? And let's get the right support for you. And you can do anything. 100% folks, lean in. Find, lean in. Find your, find your network. Find the people who believe in you and will support you to get to you two to the next level. Because nobody does it alone. Everybody. Uh, Tony Robbins has a coach. Tony Robbins has a coach, right? I still have a coach. I mean, Absolutely. I am a coach. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you can't go next level without a coach. Um, it, it was a fascinating conversation I had with uh, Erica Weeb, who is a Canadian gold medal wrestler. I interviewed her uh, shortly before she went to the Rio Olympics. And she said, the coach you start with is not always the coach you go to the Olympics with, but you will not go to the Olympics without a coach. I love that. So in those, in that thought, guys, have an amazing day, have an amazing um, uh, uh, opportunities in front of you, value those opportunities, get your trash journal, get that garbage out of your head. Uh, until next time, this is 500 Doors Real Estate Podcast, where we are talking to amazing real estate agents, investors, industry insiders that can help you have a better business and be the agent of leadership that you deserve to be and your community needs. So until next time, uh, you know, oh, by the way, be sure to pop over on Facebook and join our Facebook group, 500 Doors Real Estate Mark uh, Real Estate page. And uh, we are here live every Thursday. I am Kim Hayden, your host, and I really do thank you for sharing your time. <music>